it just paints this picture like uh like the enforcement or regulations have just been done away with. We've all seen the headlines about the EPA, the White House, and the e and whether or not there really are restrictions in the midst of this coronavirus. I mean, does do we get a free license to pollute? Welcome to Enviro Talk, a program here where we're really just chatting with some of the lead uh, leading speakers in, uh, in the industry for the environmental community. My name is Travis Bowman, and I'm the president of Enviro Workshops. You can check out our website, enviroworkshops.com, but we train the environmental professional all over the globe. We've been on six different continents, 20 different countries. We've seen 20,000 uh, environmental professionals register for over 400 workshops that we've hosted around the globe. So like I said, check out our website, enviroworkshops.com. We're also hosting a global summit. Now that we've been around the globe, we're hosting uh, in the, the Enviro Summit. Check out that website, envirosummit.com, uh, where we'll have speakers from all over the globe and uh, really addressing some of the uh, accelerating trends that they're seeing in their regions of the world. So that'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina, September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Uh, and just uh, about five months away. So uh, take a look at our website there. But here on Enviro Talk, we're, we're talking with some, like I said, some of the leaders in the industry. And uh, today we're joined with uh, Ted Wideman. He's with Pine Environmental. And Pine Environmental is actually the leading equipment rental company in North America. They have almost 40 offices across Canada and the U.S. So Ted, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Travis. I appreciate you uh, putting this venue together and inviting us in to, to share a little bit. So, thank I almost you so feel much. like I almost uh, Ted. I feel like this is a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll call it a TED talk. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'll I'll uh, I probably can't um, be as eloquent as uh, as the true TED, but I'll do my best and um, and try to share some perspective from from Pine's position. So. Well, hey, tell us a little bit more about Pine, uh, for, almost 40 offices across North America. Tell us a little bit more about what you guys do. Yeah, we're, we're 40 offices across North America. That's Canada and the U.S. Um, we've been in the business of uh, providing instrumentation and, and materials for environmental projects since 1995. Um, we were born out of the garage. Uh, uh, the founder, Angelo Pinheiro, and his brother, Roger, and um, a few others started in, in the garage in New Jersey. And, you know, there was a, a very high demand and, and need for a really good service in, in environmental instrumentation providership. And um, we embarked back in 95. And I joined in 2006. And um, I'm now director of strategic business with Pine. And uh, really, the, at the end of the day, we're all just working hard to connect with our customers and service them and, and understand the work they're doing and provide them um, the best, highest quality equipment and materials so that they can complete their jobs effectively, efficiently, and um, and really shine in their client's eyes. So, um, yeah, we're really diverse. Uh, we we um, have environmental products, so that's uh, all kinds of environmental air, water, and um, soil sampling and monitoring equipment uh, for environmental contamination and uh, investigation, remediation, uh, compliance monitoring, um, you name it from the environmental side. And a lot of the materials that are associated with that, and that's also PPE and um, health and safety equipment and kind of turnkey project work for the environmental consultants. So anything you could ever think you would need for monitoring or sampling, we likely have. And then we have uh, our non-destructive testing um, line of products too, which is for uh, infrastructure inspections, integrity testing, um, a whole line of uh, non-destructive testing equipment that supports um, manufacturing and industry and uh, the petrochem industry and, and our SEMS division too for continuous emissions monitoring. So, you know, we're, we're pretty diverse and, and, uh, and glad to be diverse. Yeah, uh, I, I know I've mentioned this on other programs, but pollution, you know, here we are dealing with a pandemic, a global plant pandemic, the coronavirus, but pollution, in my opinion, is somewhat of a pandemic. I mean, the, the pollution is a global issue. And no matter where you go around the world, there is some level, whether it's just from a gasoline station, a, 
of contamination in the soil, groundwater, or air. And you guys really are uh, providing equipment in the whole gamut of the industry, frankly, right? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and, and so as you look at uh, the pandemic currently, and we can talk a little bit more about that, but as pollution goes, uh, you know, there was some um, news articles out there published a number of weeks ago associated with uh, environmental regulatory compliance and, and the administration's position on that and softening of enforcement. And, and some articles read as though it was a free license to pollute or, you know, you don't have to comply. And that's so far from the truth. And, you know, uh, we, we see that the EPA has put out information as to what this adjustment means. And, um, and I, I would encourage all regulators to, to visit that so that they are, are really understanding the administration's direction. Um, they can then consult with their clients on what the requirements will be from a site to site, project to project um, application. And uh, there, we are, you know, from the pollution standpoint and the, the work that's out there, uh, there is a lot of routine work going on. We are, um, we're busy. Obviously, we see a little bit of a downtick, um, like most folks would expect, as our customers' customers are looking at their positions, um, what they need to get done, and, and how they want to invest in, um, in, in, their, in the work that they do. And uh, good news is that we're keeping busy, um, and we're pivoting. Mm -hmm. And there's always uh, additional opportunities, and uh, we want to be supportive of our clients. Yeah, I, uh, it's good to hear that you guys are pivoting and, st I guess, truly uh, st staying open for your customer and your clients who are – some of these sites, of course, are truly – um, life at risk. I mean, I've, I've t when I've been talking with some of the other uh, uh, folks on Enviro Talk here, we've there, there's certain sites that are – uh, you know, we're dealing with the coronavirus and we're trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, save lives and keep people from dying. Some of the environmental projects that we're working on in this industry are truly life at risk. I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we look at, um, you know, our clients work on a wide variety of different projects. And when you look at heavily contaminated sites that are impacting uh, or potentially impacting human uh, health, um, you know, and, and and there's direct correlations to the level of contamination and, and maybe drinking water supplies or surface water or ecology or uh, whatever it might be. There are plenty of, uh, we've made some messes over the years and um, there are plenty of them out there that need need attention. And, and I think, um, and I think it's good because we still see that our clients are, are engaged in that. And, um, and there's obviously challenges with COVID-19 and, 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 um, managing the health and safety of your employees. And, and at Pine, we, we take that very seriously too. And uh, as a provider of rental instrumentation, that's something we have had internally to um, adjust and, and adapt and, and heighten uh, certain levels of um, protection for our employees and, and decontamination and just um, of our equipment and uh ensuring a quality product that's safe for our customers and so those things are happening internally and i think everybody's having to adjust to a certain extent as to yeah. protecting their their employees um, we take health and safety very seriously at pine and um and our customers health and safety too so uh, yeah. a lot of adjustments there but I, i'm encouraged by the work that's going on and and, and our ability to help support them in that you know, one of the things that I love about, <clears throat> excuse me, Pine is you all invest about $8 million a year. I know that just because of my conversation with Angelo. I've known uh, Angelo Pinheiro now for a number of years. And by, by the way, for my Portuguese friends, uh, he's, he's from the Azores. And uh, for many of you all know my connection to the Azores. But uh, so I've, I've loved uh, Angelo and worked with Pine Environmental through the years. But, um, but Angelo, I know, has said, I, I think it's one point or 8.1 million or 8.2 million dollars that you all spend every year on new equipment, which I think uh, is, is really big when it comes to a crisis like this and not having um, old equipment that who knows where, you know, I, you know when you yeah. deal with a crisis, I think that's a, a big part of this industry. Oh, for sure. Um, and, and Pine's been engaged in, in many crises. Crises? Crises, yeah. How do we say that? <laughs> many, many of the crises that we have uh, 
been faced with as a nation over the years, whether mm -hmm. it's um, Hurricane Katrina, uh, any of the hurricanes, uh, Superstorm uh, Sandy. Um, but, you know, you talk about the anthrax scare years ago right. um, uh, and, and many more, you know, wildfires right. in California. Our, our, our response has always been there to support our clients. And, and as we understand the, the equipment needs and, and the change in the, um, in the requirements, we invest and we want to be there in support of that crisis. Um, and it's for the people of this country. I mean, we want to be there to help. Um, we want to be there um, in good faith for, for our customers. And um, so, so we always do invest. And right now, you know, you're, that's a good kind of segue into a, a point is um, we're investing now. Uh, we are pivoting. We understand that decon and disinfection work is going to be a very big um, focus of the environmental professionals because of their background in has waste, uh, you know, training and, and has water training and, and that they can manage um, these types of hazardous sites, whether it's a biohazard or a chemical hazard, um, you know, their expertise is going to be brought in for supporting disinfection. And um, and we're pivoting to support that too by getting, um, you know, some uh, materials, uh, fogging agents and sprayers and uh, and foggers and uh, and also some uh, disinfecting type testing kits uh, and meters, ATP testing. So we're we're pivoting there too to to help support this effort because it's going to be big. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think history has proven that Pine has always been there investing. Another thing is we're seeing a lot of folks, and this is for consideration too, if you own your own equipment, now is a good time to get it uh, in for repair and service because mm. uh, we know that as, as the workload kind of ramps up and, and most of this project work is not really going away, it's just kind of getting pushed back. If, if it is getting pushed back at all, yeah, it's going to cut loose. And um, we want, we're, we're, investing a lot in repair and of our fleet and maintenance of our fleet. And we encourage the same for you guys. So contact us if, if you have that need. Uh, so yes. you're ready when, when the time comes. Do you guys see any changes in regulatory? Uh, I mean, as you're dealing with you know, clients all over uh, from the East coast, to West coast, Canada, and, and so on, are you all seeing any kind of changes in regulations that are making it more challenging for the environmental consultant, whether it's in Canada or here in the U S or, or in, in light of obviously COVID-19? I think it's more on the health and safety side for sure. I mean, I, I'm not hearing much in the in the way of changing regulation, so I'm not hearing that there's um, there's new laws being uh, you know enacted or or different changes in in the in the regulatory um, process. process. I, I think there's there's a little bit of of resource crunch. Um, I think you know if you look at the state regulators and the federal regulators and uh, and kind of the enforcement um, policy change. I think there's a little bit of, of resource crunch there. So uh, there might be, uh, it might be presenting some lags or delays in, in new work being permitted or, or um, you know, being, I don't know, advised on as, as quickly as possible. Um, I don't, I haven't seen that. Uh, my, my thought is it's more on the health and safety side and the challenges associated with um, ensuring that people are are conducting their work in a safe regard. So oh, probably some OSHA compliance stuff. And but I haven't looked deeply into yeah, the, any yeah. regulatory change. That's good. Okay. So, uh, for, so as far as like, um, I guess maybe a standard of operating procedure, anything that has changed on you all's end in terms of equipment, whether as it's coming in or going out, or uh, what have you guys done to make some changes uh, just in, in, in regards to you all's business? Uh, yeah, we've, we've had to make some changes. So um, fairly early on, we um, addressed our business continuity uh, strategies and plans. And when you have 40 locations, nearly 40 locations, you have to um, you have to address continuity within your business, and that's a good thing too for Pine is that we have numerous locations. So whether or not there's um, an impact to one location and they can't necessarily be open uh, for whatever reason because of state or city you know guidance, 
uh, we can still service clients from other uh, facilities and, and work with our customers in those geographies. So we addressed some contingency, uh, certainly from an operation standpoint. Uh, there was a, a, a and, and we talked quite a bit about the health and safety aspect uh, operationally. Right. Um, you know, we, we were staying in um, close uh, touch as to what the CDC was saying on guidance in the, and right. the WHO right. and, and implementing those practices and, and keeping safe distance. And, and a good thing is as a provider of uh, protective equipment, you know, personal protective equipment, we had uh, respirators in stock that, uh, and, and 95 masks that we could uh, utilize internally to help uh, mitigate anything and, and plenty of gloves and, and the like. So we, we implemented that. And um, certainly from a health and safety standpoint, we, you know, we, we wanted to make sure our employees first and our customers are protected. So That's there was a, uh, there were changes there and certainly on the decon process. Um, we are, uh, you know, it's not that we didn't clean and decontaminate things before, but some of the materials that we were using as opposed to disinfectants, mm -hmm. uh, not that bleach, I mean, bleach water is a great disinfectant. Um, and that was, you know, utilized, uh, on certain equipment. We're, we're making sure that we're doing our part to, to protect our end user. So nice. yeah, there's investment there and, and, and that, that comes with, um, with providing anything to a client, you want to make sure you're doing what you can do to protect them. So uh, we ramped it up significantly. That's so good to hear. Yeah, I, so, I, you know, I, that you guys are. Uh, it's good to hear that you all are, are are making those changes and and still being able to provide the equipment that their cust the, the customer needs to get the work done. Yeah, because well, and that's that's our goal, and 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 we're still open and we're still cranking away, and uh, we take that seriously. So we're. We're really doing the best we can to be good stewards of uh, our clients and 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 their health and safety and uh, doing everything we can internally to make sure that happens. That's good. Yeah, and and, it, and it's I mean it's good to hear that because and especially in light of the you know the the, the the question we were talking about earlier was do we just have a free license to pollute and yeah. the reality is no we don't no we don't and <laughs> and there's yeah. still work to be done and and there's a lot of work still going on in the environmental industry that's right you know it's uh it's funny to to you know and i i when i first heard uh some indications that there was released to the to media about um adjustments in the epa's enforcement guidelines uh and you would click around and you know you yeah could, the internet's used by everyone. So I'm clicking around and I'm reading some of the article headlines and it's just like, man, you know, it just paints this picture like, uh, like the enforcement or regulations have just been done away with. And right. that's far from the truth. Um, and you know, you go and you dig deep and you, you get to the truth. And I think we should all seek that, you know, it's mm -hmm. really important to, to understand, um, what information's out there and make sure you're going to good source and, um, and and I certainly don't have a full comprehension and understanding of it, but if I do uh, need to know, I, I know where to go. I, I don't um, just want to believe anything and everything that's out there in the news. Right. Uh, it's it's a tough world to navigate the the news media these days, but um, that's the that encouragement sure. there. Yeah, you know. So yeah, you can't just go dump uh you know a bunch of solvents out the back uh, yeah. and and think that you're not going to get in trouble. Those laws are still there and. Yep. Uh, enforcement criteria are still there and there's definitely no uh you know criminal actions will be uh will be monitored and reported and and there will be a consequence yep. Yep. <laughs> so there's no free license there travis thank god thank yeah, god right? <laughs> yeah so and it's good we're, we're we're in close contact um uh as partners to our customers you know they rely on us for um supporting them so we're we're talking project work and and a lot of the work they're doing is is essential and and we've been deemed essential and um uh so that's good you know um we're an essential business and in support of our clients and and also uh uh we, so we have our drivers uh formed with a letter that uh deems them as essential we, oh, we had do. to we yeah and that's another thing you know in, in pines um one of pine service uh benefits is uh local uh no charge delivery and pickup um and you know within the vicinity of our branches and uh we do that and um 
or, or you know, even if we're delivering with a with a charge beyond our, our normal scope, that whatever we we are able to do that. But we had to we had to mitigate some things with our clients where, uh, you know, you can't just walk into an office or there may not be anybody at the office. So we had right. to really right. think about uh, how we interact. Uh, you know, uh, what level of interaction was done? How we it's just coordination. And that's where relationships are huge and, and having good relationships with our clients and our customers so we can uh, navigate those challenges together. I think we've done a great job and, and hopefully our uh, customers feel the same way and we'll continue to support them that way. Good stuff. Yeah, hey, thanks. Tana, I know you're busy. So thanks so much for coming on the program. And uh, I know <laughs> you got your hands full with 40 offices and all the stuff that you got going on. So I appreciate you taking the time to come on the program and talk to us about what you guys are doing in the midst of the pandemic. Yeah, you're quite welcome, Travis. I appreciate you having me. Stay safe and uh, we'll connect more here in the future. Yep. Sounds good, Ted. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Have a good day.